Hello everyone, my name is Hightech Man. Today we're going to show you how to disable privacy settings on Windows 10. As if you don't already know, Windows 10 has a lot of privacy concerns. At least when I installed it on my computer, I had a lot of concerns with it. And I figured I'll just make a quick video on how to disable said privacy concerns. Um, I'm going to be assuming that you have either A, have a fresh copy of Windows 10 and we can disable some of the, the, the settings before you even go into using Windows 10. And then I'm going to be also doing a continuation with that because just because you disable things in the prequel or pre-installation features doesn't mean that it's fully disabled. So what I'm going to do is it, I'm going to put a little card or something up here that will show what time frame you actually need to be if, is it if you already have installed Windows 10. So let's get started. So this is the screen that get going fast. You're going to see that uh, after you uh, basically put in your product key and log on to the Wi-Fi and all that stuff. Um, now with the pre-anniversary uh, edition version of Windows 10, there's actually, uh, you only used to get use express settings and back. And then on the uh, underneath learn more, there would actually be a small in small text that says uh, customize settings, this little customize button that you see here currently next to it because people who are reporting that they, they don't want to use the express settings. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click on customize and you can see here the customized settings. Personalize your speech, typing and inking input by sending your input to Microsoft. We, we don't want to do that because all the information that basically is a glorified keylogger is what if you think about it. Uh, send typing and inking data to Microsoft to improve recognition. No, nope, don't want to do that because I mean, I don't want Microsoft to know what my computer is because basically it assigns it like a, a number and then it, it can tie all that information on the Microsoft servers to actually use my computer or know what my computer is, where it is, all that stuff. And we don't want that. Of course not. Now, if you're using services like Cortana, for example, you will probably need to enable the first one. But personally, I don't like Cortana. I don't use it. I mean, why? That's my question. I mean, if you like to use Cortana, leave a comment and tell me why you actually like to use Cortana. But uh, we're going to keep going. Uh, let apps use advertising ID for experiences across apps. Of course not. We don't want that. I mean, I, my objective is to get less ads, if anything. Let Skype, if installed, help you connect with friends, address book, blah, blah, blah. SMS data charges may apply. I don't want Skype attached to any of my phone numbers or any of that crap. Location, this is the best one. Turn on Find My Device and let Windows and apps request your location, including location history, and send Microsoft location data to improve location services. <laughs> yeah, I have a hard enough time doing that on my iPhone, enough. So no, I'm not gonna do that, I'm sorry. Uh, but this would be an interesting feature if you like if you had a laptop for example, but this is a desktop We don't need that. I mean, why would you need location services for a, a desktop? Really? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and click next. You'll see here some more customized setting connectivity and error reporting automatically connected suggested open hotspots Not all networks are secure. Well, no, I don't want you to automatically connect to the Starbucks hotspot or the McDonald's hotspot I'm, I, No, forget that besides I mean this is a regular computer. Why would you need that? Uh, automatically connect to hotspots temporarily to see if uh, paid network services are available. No, don't you want that neither. And send full diagnostics usage to data to Microsoft, turning this off sends only basic data. We don't want them to send any data of our computer to Microsoft at all. I mean, this is just basically like, it seems to me like a giant breach of privacy. So anyways, disable all those functions first and we're gonna hit next. Keep going, there's still more privacy stuff. Browser protection and updates. Use smart screen online to help protect against malicious content. Okay, that's, uh, sites loaded by Windows browsers and uh, store apps. I mean, smart screen is usually okay to leave on, but I mean, for the time being, I'm gonna leave that on because that, that is actually something that will protect you. Um, use page prediction for reading, speeding. I mean, you know, I don't use Microsoft Edge hardly ever, so I'm just gonna disable all this stuff because this is all mostly for Windows or for Microsoft Edge for the internet browser and things like that. Uh, updates, blah, blah, blah. Here, this last one you'll like. Get updates and send updates to other PCs on the internet to speed up app and Windows update downloads. That means that if you download Windows updates, like for Windows 10 on your computer, and there's another computer in your area, i.e. like your network or in your network area, for example, let's say you're using like a, you know, AT&T internet or Time Warner cable or whatever, and you're, you guys basically are kind of using the same numbers. That means that someone else can hook up to your computer and retrieve that update to reduce 
reduced bandwidth. And personally, I don't like doing that. I would don't think that's very safe. So that's why I'm gonna disable that last function. We're gonna go ahead and click next. And it says just a moment. So basically right now it's going through its motions and it's going to start applying all the updates and we're gonna start getting into more details. So here's another thing, make it yours. Your Microsoft account opens worlds of benefits. Sign in to your personalized experience and learn more. Now they're purposely saying, they're making it look like you need to make a Microsoft account just to use your computer, which is ridiculous. Because if you look right down here, it says no account, create one. Okay, well then you think you have to create one. You don't have to create a Microsoft account. Why Microsoft are you doing this? You don't need this. There's a little thing here, little tiny text says skip this step. This little button that really should be made bigger basically allows you to make a local account on your computer like how you used to be, you know, back in Windows 7 and Windows 8 and Windows 8.1 and God forbid Windows Vista. I mean, so basically we're going we're gonna to name this computer. I'm going to call this computer of, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. And just for the sake, because I'm going to re, I'm gonna be rewiping this computer anyway. So uh, I'm not going to enter a password, just hit next. And it's going to say, okay, so meet Cortana. I don't want to use Cortana. We're not going to use Cortana because of all the data and privacy things that it pulls out just to get all your information. I don't need Cortana, never use it. There's no need for Cortana, honestly. Like, I'm not gonna say that Google Now is better, but like, it's just all the things with Microsoft, no, sorry. So it says here, we're happy you're here. And then it's gonna say, getting things ready. Please don't turn off your PC. Well, no, duh, of course I'm not gonna do that. Anyways, I'm gonna fast forward until we reach the desktop. Okay, so now that this is all done, I was originally gonna show you guys how to open up the registry, how to edit the host file, how to add all these, you know, anti-blocking of, you know, Cortana and all these extra advertisement crap that you don't need that Microsoft sends out to basically, you know, sweep their servers and get collecting data on you. But uh, I'm actually not gonna do that because there's actually a program out there that makes this step a whole lot easier and I just found out about it. And basically I'm going to, I'm, I'm gonna go to the website right now. Okay, so the program is basically made by SpyBot, the same people that made SpyBot Search and Destroy. Uh, if you remember that old antivirus program back in you know the mid 2000s, whatever. Anyways, they made this uh, program called SpyBot Anti Bacon, Anti Bacon. SpyBot Anti Beacon, and basically what it does is it disables all of the junk that you would normally see, i.e., like uh, you know the the spoofing of the advertisers, uh, all the security that open ports, things like that. It even goes as far as disabling specific updates that are designed to turn all these things back on, and that's the main important thing because when you do a Windows update, sometimes Windows will actually send out an update that just turns everything completely back on, which is very annoying. So, I mean, it kind of helps with that process. So basically you'd go to their website, which I'm gonna have a website, I'm gonna have the website down in the description below, but it's safernetworking.org slash spybot dash anti dash beacon. So go ahead, we're just gonna, I'm gonna download the installer because they also have a portable edition, which is really cool. And uh, basically so you can put it on Windows, flat, a little flash drive so you can take it to your friend's house and help them out, whatever. Uh, and just click on download. We can just download the latest version, which is 1.5.0 at the making of this video. Uh, they might update to, you know, version 1.6, but like I said, this video is 1.5. Go ahead and save it. And you can notice I'm using Edge browser right now because I don't have Chrome installed yet. So just don't freak out. It's normal. I'm just doing this for right now. And just by the way, don't trust every single uh, Windows 10 you know, disabling updates or red edit program that you see out there for you know, privacy because there's a really bad one out there known as Open Candy, which is basically Adaware. I mean, what they do is they take your, they disable all the stuff, which is very good, but they also write in the host file, like, you know, redirects to advertisement sites. So, you know, they're not really helping you. They're actually hurting you more than anything. So just keep in mind, if you see, if you run into a program called Open Candy, stay away from it. It's crazy, okay? So you can see here, we're gonna be installing it real quickly. It's just a standard MSI installer. Just gonna go ahead and hit next, accept the agreement, hit next, next. Uh, I'm not gonna create, a desktop icon, but we do want refresh immunization after every system reboot. That basically means it double checks itself to make sure that all the settings are turned on so that Microsoft doesn't turn them off and then it doesn't sweep again just to verify everything. So we're gonna go ahead and launch SpyBot Anti Beacon and we're gonna need admin privileges, so just say yes. And you can see here now it's going ahead and scanning it. There's no protection applied yet. So basically what it's gonna do is it's going to uh, block everything from the host, in the host file that does all the stuff, all the rendering, all the Wi-Fi, all that stuff. It's gonna go ahead and just disable it completely. So we're just gonna hit this one immunize button 
And with one button, it does all that process. And in fact, you can go in here to the optional tab, and you can see here for web search group policy, for example, like if you, uh, it, it'll block things like, for example, with the, the Bing search engine uh, that it integrates with Cortana or it tries to, you know, mix stuff, mix around like that. I don't use Bing at all, so you can go ahead and use that. Cortana group policy, block Cortana completely, which is what we want. I don't use a OneDrive, so I can just go ahead and block it completely, even though it constantly is annoying you to use a OneDrive account like spam. OneDrive group policy, gone. Bing IP addresses, anything that has to do with Bing, gone. Uh, I'm just gonna disable all this, we don't need it. I mean, I don't need, I mean, I don't personally use, I, I would leave the Office 2015 and 2016 open if you are using that as like, you know, like, Office 2016 for like word processing. You want those updates, those are good. So I'll just leave those open. But for the most part, that's basically it as far as the protection for the spot for the beacon. So I'll just exit this out real quickly. But I wanted to show you guys what it actually does. I don't want to access the store. So if you go into your PC and then the hard drive, the Windows file, and then uh, the system 32, and then drivers, ETC, and then host. Now, if you go here into the host file, I'm gonna go ahead and just open it real quickly. And you can see here, this is basically where you would go ahead and like, for some people, like you can actually make redirects, which is a funny prank, but the host file, basically what it's doing right now is it's blocking, you can see here, ads.msn.com, all this is blocking all of these ad networks for MSN, Microsoft, Cortana, feedback, and all the reporting stuff that it would go to Microsoft, and basically blocking it with the 0.0.0.0, .0 IP address, and it goes above and beyond with a lot of these things. Now, if you actually do use specific things like, like MSN, you like to use it or whatever, you can go back and delete it one by one, it's not a big, big deal. So you would think that we'd be done by just installing that program. You're wrong, okay? There is still stuff that they're reporting to Microsoft. So we're gonna go ahead and just hit the start button and we're gonna type in privacy. Uh, and you see there, privacy settings. I'm gonna go ahead and enable the privacy settings. And I'm just gonna go into general and we're just gonna go down line by line to see the, some of the stuff that's still available. Let websites provide local relevant content by accessing my language list. Nope, let access, let apps, on my other devices, open apps and continue experiences on other devices. If you have a Windows phone and you like the little handoff application where it does that, that's basically what this is. Personally, I don't have any Microsoft Office or handheld devices. So I'm gonna turn that off. Location, location services thankfully have been remained off when we actually turned them off in the beginning of this tutorial. But if it didn't, just go ahead and, you know, we don't want location services on or general location, or we don't wanna share any of our location with Cortana, Mail, Edge, whatever. Uh, camera. Let apps use my camera. Nope, I don't want anyone to use my camera except for me. So same goes for my microphone. I don't want that to happen with anything else. Now, if you do use Skype or you use other applications like that, yes, you will need to enable it. But the thing is, is that you can actually just go ahead and disable everything except for Skype. Now that, that's the only exception for microphone and camera. Notifications, let apps access my notifications. This basically will say for applications, like for example, let's say you're downloading a file or something like that on Google Chrome and it finishes downloading, but it's minimized. Well, a little notification will come up saying, hey, it finished. So that one I'll leave on because I actually do use that. Speech inking and typing. This is usually where you know you would do like the automatic uh, training of your voice so that way it knows when you say, hey, Cortana, um, that's that it'll pop up. I'm not gonna let it get to know me because I don't want it to know anything about me. Account information, let apps use my name, picture, and other account information. Of course not. Uh, contacts, we don't want the apps to use my contacts. I don't use the calendar, don't use it at all. Call history, this is includes your SMS messages. Nope, email, I don't use my email on this. I use the regular web platforms like everyone else. Messaging, nope, don't use that either. Radios, let the let apps control the radios. We don't want this to control anything. It is just, uh, it's abysmal how many times you gotta go back and just tell it to stop doing this. Now, feedback and diagnostics. This one's an interesting one because Windows should ask for my feedback automatically once a week. I just put never, because I, I don't like sending stuff to Microsoft, anything at all, because 90% of the time they have developers and testers for this, which are getting paid to do this. And they're doing a pretty bad job, I might add. 
diagnostics and usage we've already you know basically uh, disabled this in the beginning go ahead and look back at the beginning of this video to see what we're talking about background apps all the apps that are running in the background look at this the calendar is running in the background the camera app the connect app contact supports uh feedback support uh get started is still running groove me all of this is still running in the background and if anything this is also pulling your processor down so now that we got all that disabled Okay, so this final, final, final portion in, this is completely optional if you choose to do this, and I'm just gonna put a big warning here right now. This is going to disable the services that are basically sending all of the diagnostics and all of that information to Microsoft in the actual registry and system files. Now, like I said, big warning on here. This is gonna involve you know, system edits, things like that. If you're not comfortable doing that, just, just don't even bother to do it at this point. But this is for all you techies that are out there that actually want to be completely safe and have all of the security things completely stripped from Microsoft for about the width your privacy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna launch uh, when the command prompt. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tap on the Windows key and type CMD. And what we needed to do is you need to run this as an administrator. So just go ahead and run administrator, hit yes. And we're gonna go ahead and just run the uh, command prompt. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to type in a few commands. So we're going to type in CD space backward slash. And basically what that'll do is it'll take us back to root C. Now what we're going to be typing in is the stop diagnostics tracking uh, service. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to type in SC space stop space D-I-A-G-T-R-A-C-K and then hit enter. And you can see here that it says that the service has all, has not been started yet, which is because SpyBot already stopped the application altogether. So basically what we're gonna do next is we're going to uninstall this service completely from the computer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in the command SC space delete space uh, the diagnostic track. So D-I-A-G-T-R-A-C-K, enter. And now it successfully deleted the diagnostic track. <laughs> So here's the interesting one. We're going to disable the uh, DMWAPP, uh, the AP, the app service push. Now what's interesting is you'll see here that the service name and the display name are two different things. It's actually the app service, um, a app share service. So we're gonna go ahead and disable, I'm gonna copy this real quickly and we're just gonna go ahead and hit stop. Oh, I'm sorry, I need to hit uh, SC space stop space and then control V, which is what I love about the new control panel in Windows 10. You can actually control V in command prompt about time. Anyways, you can see here that it also failed to start because it hasn't been started yet. That's perfectly fine. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to delete this service because this is the service that actually pushes everything to the Microsoft clouds and you know that's where they start making all your information or making your profile. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit delete. Enter and it's successfully deleted. You can see here and that it gave us an error message on our services saying Windows is not able to query the status because it's now gone. So you can see here, it is complete. It should, well, let me refresh and it's gone. It's completely gone. Okay, so now that we have all of that done, you think, okay, this has gotta be the end, right? Wrong. We, ch I, all I did, this is a fresh install, keep in mind. This is not how I'm gonna prove to you that they're gonna turn this back on. I'm actually gonna go in and go do a Windows update real quickly and I'm going to update the computer completely and then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you what they turned back on. So I'll be right back. Okay, everyone, as you can now see, we've rebooted the computer. I'm gonna go back and we've already installed all of the updates. So I'm gonna go in and check our privacy settings again. And we're gonna see if they are still turned off. So as you can see here, all of our settings here are still turned off. Location is still turned off. The camera stuff is turned off. Microphone off, notifications, or I left them on. Account info off, contacts off, calendar off call history off email off messaging off radios are still off other devices off feedback diagnostics set to never still and background apps are oh see look some of these background apps turn themselves back on so i'm going to go ahead and disable those so wow you can see here a lot of these apps We've got more apps now to just disable because we don't need Netflix or all this other crap. That's paid and Wi-Fi cellular. Yeah, right. Pandora. Nope. Look at all of this background stuff that's just going to clog up our processor. Anyways, 
But like I said, once you have the SpyBot anti-beacon program up and running, you really shouldn't need to worry about anything. See, it's already blocked everything. It's still on the optimal settings. Everything's great. So now that is how you completely disable all of the privacy settings in Windows 10. So thank you very much everyone for watching. If you liked that video, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe, and share the video with your friends. And as always, I'll see you in the next tutorial.